Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and for today's video, we are going to discuss the second part of the video series about IMCI. The first video is about the IMCI introduction which I will be posting the link into our description box. Please do not forget to watch that video before you go and watch the succeeding videos about IMCI because that video talks about the history of IMCI, how it started here in the Philippines. It also talks about the two uh, the target population of IMCI, which is the less than 5 years old children, divided into two. We have the young infant and the young child, 0 to 2 months and 2 months to 5 years old, respectively. We also have he there, the danger sign, which is the kuva, convulsion, uh, unable to breastfeed, drink or eat, uh, vomits everything, and abnormally sleepy, lethargic or difficult to awaken. Followed by the assessment of the main symptoms, which is closure includes your cough and cold and difficulty of breathing we also have your diarrhea fever and ear problem plus the conditions that will be treated under your imci on that particular video also we're able to discuss the three classifications of the imci conditions which is treated uh, differently according to the severity of the conditions so basically that's the pink classification yellow classification and green classification under your pink classification these are the very severe febrile disease conditions conditions that needs or requires urgent referral that commonly be given with appropriate first dose of antibiotic plus the giving of the diazepam if the child is convulsing at the moment and this is what this video is all about so this is second part of this video series so please do watch that for video first before go and watch the succeeding videos that i'll be uploading okay now for this video i am going to talk about the, con the the interventions that is commonly done in the health center only yes you heard it correctly this um, interventions is done only by a trained professionals in our case we nurses Okay, who are trained with IMCA protocol and we are not going to delegate this to the parents okay but they need to be informed so in this in the treat in treating patients under pain classification especially in giving medications we have to tell this we have to do this um, guidelines number one is that we need to explain to the mother why the drug is given of course if we are not going to feed them with information they will be asking a lot of questions and that would also affect their decision on if they're going to allow us to do uh, or to do um, or continue giving in the interventions to their child or not okay another one is also to get the child's uh, age and weight in order for us to compute for the appropriate antibiotic or the diazepam dose to be given to the child between the weight and the age, of course, we will base it more on weight than the age. Why? Because there are instances that the age or the weight of the child is not appropriate with the client's age. Um, we are basing on, on the weight because of the drug would take effect based on the body surface. So, kung gano karami, nakadependian kung gano din kalaki yung bata. Okay, we are going to make use of sterile needles and sterile syringes when giving IM injections. This is to prevent any uh, sepsis or infections that might occur measure the dose accurately using accurate dosing materials and give the drug intramuscular we are referring to the antibiotics okay and if the child cannot be referred follow the instructions provided okay in the imci protocol so the first thing to check is that to classify so what are we going to do if the child is classified under very severe disease so very severe disease is a condition wherein there is a presence of more one or more of the danger signs which is your kova take note only one will only one the danger signs we can already classify them as pink except for patient under your diarrheal conditions Okay, so one danger signs can be classified already as pink classification. So, especially if there are more than one uh, danger signs. Again, the danger signs are your convulsion, unable to breastfeed, vomits everything, and abnormally sleepy. Okay, we are going to categorize the condition as very severe disease if the child does not have any main symptoms. They only have your uh, danger signs. Okay, and the treatment is the following. Okay, you give the asifam, convulsing now. If the child is convulsing now, quickly complete the assessment. Give pre-referral pre treatment immediately. 
treatment to prevent low blood sugar and keep the child warm and refer urgently. As you can see here, sabi niya, refer urgently. Kaya nga mga pink classification natin is inire-refer natin sila urgently. I would like to put emphasis here on the first highlighted bulleted treatment which is the giving of the yasipam if the child is convulsing now. Again, if the child is convulsing now, not convulsing at home. If the child is convulsing at home but is not currently convulsing now, we don't need to give the yasipam. You will only give the yasipam if the child is convulsing now. It also has here the third bullet, give pre-referral treatment under this in each of the classification that we will be discussing later on. Most commonly, if it's an infection, it is commonly seen in the treatment area, the giving of the appropriate antibiotic before referral. So what is that appropriate antibiotic? We are going to discuss that in a while. We start first discussing what is the Yasipam. So the Yasipam is actually an anti-anxiety drugs. This is an anxiolytic drugs. Basically, this is uh, an anxiolytic drugs that can also be used as an anti-convulsant drugs. This is a relaxant, uh, basically. Okay, this is a uh, um, high addictive drug. That's why not everyone has an access with regards to your diazepam. So the question is, what are we going to do if the child is convulsing at the moment upon uh, or during the assessment in the clinic? The first thing to do if the child is convulsing is to turn the child into his or her child to clear the airway. At the same time, okay, this would also prevent any uh, clogging onto his uh, uh, airway with his mouth or her mouth and also to prevent aspiration and take note avoid putting things in the client's mouth because this would further do harm to the child okay and there might be an accidental um, bite also on the on the part of the uh, caregiver if you're going to put something on the client's mouth and the clients accidentally bite their hands so that's why we need to avoid putting things in the mouth it's a common practice for those who are not able to be trained on handle to un on how to handle the situations but please do not do this okay when the child is um uh, when the child is uh, convulsing okay with regards to the dosage, the dosage is based on the client's weight. We are going to multiply 0.5 milligram or 0.5 milligram per kilogram. The acid injection solution and it will be administered per rectum. Again, let me repeat that per rectum, not intramuscular injection using a small syringe, preferably a tuberculin or if not available, a catheter. So just going to inject it in the client's rectum. Check for the low blood sugar and treat if there is. Um, checking the blood sugar is basically to check for the uh, blood sugar using your glucometer. If a child has less than the normal range of the glucose level in our blood, then you have to treat it by giving an extra breast milk or if breast milk is not available or if the child is not breast, uh, breastfeeding, we can make use of your sugar water. Okay. Another one is mm -hmm. give oxygen to the child. Since the child is convulsing, it would also affect the oxygenation process since the airway will be affected also before referral. Okay? And if convulsion has stopped, after 10 minutes, repeat diazepam dose if necessary. Okay? So that is basically the diazepam. Now, in giving diazepam, this is the um, um, dosaging that we will be use okay for two months to six months six months to 12 months 12 months to three years old and three years old to five years old with a kilogram of five to seven seven to ten ten to fourteen and fourteen to nineteen respectively so the dosage is gonna be 0 0.5 ml 1.0 ml and 1.5 ml and 2.0 ml respectively again this will be administered okay per rectum of the child using a small syringe now let's go now to the next part which is the use of antibiotic before we go to that let me establish the reason why do we need to discuss this video separately as you can see with this different classification what i would like you to notice is that all of these are pink classification and under this pink classification you would always notice under the treatment it says there refer urgently after giving the first dose of antibiotic Okay, same, di same thing with this classification, very severe febrile disease, give first dose of antibiotic, then refer urgently. Another one is that 
for the very severe febrile disease for patient with possible um, with high fever but not dengue and not malaria, give first dose of antibiotic. Then after that, refer urgently. Then for severe complicated meso, same thing. It says there, give first dose of an appropriate antibiotic, then refer urgently. Then another one for mastoiditis, give first dose of antibiotic, then refer urgently. And for complicated severe acute malnutrition, same thing. Give first dose of antibiotic, okay, then after that, refer urgently. So what I want you to notice is that with all those classification, there is no antibiotic mention, okay? And on the page 17 of the IMCI uh, book chart or the chart, okay, it talks about the giving of intramuscular antibiotics for children being referred urgently. So on that particular part or page of the module or the, um, or the uh, chart, it says there that we have to give this following antibiotic for patient under pink classification that requires urgent referral and needs to be given with an initial appropriate dose of antibiotic. The question is, what are those antibiotics? The antibiotics are, number one, we have to give ampicillin 50 mg per kilogram and or gentamicin and gentamicin 7.5 mg per kilogram. So this is a combination drug. Ampicillin plus gentamicin and it will be given intramuscularly. Let me repeat that. Intramuscularly, I am po inject natin. I am on the large group of muscles. Pwede po sa ating uh, sa vastus lateralis ng bata or sa upper gluteus maximus. If in case that ampicillin is not uh, available, we can give benzyl penicillin about 500,000 units per ml. Okay, or but in giving your benzyl penicillin, add 8 ml sterile water to vial of 5 million units, okay, uh, in order for this to be diluted. And of course, medyo masakit din kasi ito. That's why it needs to be diluted and it has to be given very slowly, okay, I am, before we refer the child to the nearest healthcare facility that can provide further management. Again, the drug of choice for the pink classification that requires an uh, that requires urgent referral but needs to be given an appropriate antibiotic is your ampicillin plus gentamicin. If ampicillin is not available, we will be combining gentamicin using now your penicillin. Okay, penicillin. So for the ampicillin, dilute it with 500 milligram vial with 2.1 ml of sterile water. And if referral is not possible or delayed, repeat the ampicillin dose injection every six hours. When there is a strong suspicion of meningitis dose, we have to increase um, or decrease the interval, okay? And you have to make it, um, increase it at, uh, up to four times, okay? Four times. We will quadruple the dose of the drug. For the gentamicin, it's 7.5 milligram per kilogram per day, once daily, okay? And this is gonna be the table on how to give the medication for two months to four months, four months to 12 months, 12 months to two years old, and three years old to five years old. For the ampicillin is one, two, three, and five ml respectively. For the gentamicin is 0 0.5 to one, 1.1 to 1.8, 1.9 to 2.7, and 2.8 to 3.5 respectively. If in case the ampicillin is not available, we may use your benzyl penicillin at a dose of 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 1.0, and 1.5 ml respectively according to the child's age and weight. Again, this drug is given intramuscularly while your diazepam is given per rectum. And both of these drugs are given to patients under pink classification that requires urgent referral to the hospital. I hope that it is clear. If you do have any questions, please feel free to comment it down to our uh, comment box and please don't like to share. Subscribe and comment on this video. Paki-like na rin po and paki-abangan ang ating mga susunod na video about IMCI protocol. That would be all. Thank you for watching. See you on my next video.